Uh, my name is Farshid Ghiasi, and uh, today I'm going to talk a uh, little bit about my whole life journey, where I started and where we are right now. And uh, at the end, uh, maybe you know, some recommendations or stuff that I've learned, I would like to share it you know, with our fellow IT entrepreneurs. Uh, a lot of my friends, who knows me already know about uh, my life story and some of them might be here. So if you're feeling bored, you can play Candy Crush. Uh, okay, so my life journey, you know, like the most important part of it started back on 4th February 1999 when I was leaving uh, Peshawar, Pakistan to Malaysia on a journey that uh, I was a little bit confused about it myself as well. I was actually, I had an offer in my hand to go and study uh, in Malaysia in a university called International Islamic University. Um, like right before getting the offer, I was like a few months earlier, I had just graduated from the high school and I started uh, working in a carpet weaving factory as uh, not weaving carpet but developing a software for them to manage you know, their inventory and production and all that. But I had one problem you know, uh, when I was going to Malaysia. The offer that I had in my hand and the scholarship to go and study in Malaysia was not to study IT, but it was Islamic revealed knowledge and human sciences. So supposedly, uh, I was to become an Islamic scholar. But I have, you know, like high respect for that, but my uh, love was for the information technology and IT. So, and uh, I had, you know, like this love for IT and programming ever since I was a kid. I started learning programming in uh, school. So that is, you know, I wanted to be a programmer. And I had a different offer in my hand, but in 1999, having no hope living in Pakistan or there was no hope in Afghanistan as well, I decided to, you know, like, let's just go and at least study something. So I was basically confused and I took the decision and I went to uh, Malaysia while my dreams were all shattered as I couldn't study IT. This is the beautiful university I went to. So I started my studies here in the university. And uh, my friends, you know, my uh, other, there were some other Afghan students who were new. They would always tease me, you know, with what I was studying, that, you know, I would eventually become probably the Imam of uh, Polikhushti Mosque after my graduation. So that actually, you know, uh, hurt it a bit. Although I have high respect for uh, being an Imam, I've done it once. Uh, but I was lucky that, you know, when I started my first semester, my roommate was actually son of our deputy rector. So I uh, told him, you know, all my story. And there was a problem in my offer letter that it was clearly stated that I cannot change my program of study if I go once to Malaysia. But um, I told him all the issues and, you know, he spoke to his father and he told me that, okay, if in your first semester you get a GPA of 3.5 and above, we can, you know, uh, get you, you know, change your program to whatever you like. I said, fine. And that one semester, quite tough as well, went on. And at the end of the semester, I got a GP of four. And I wasn't like a very extraordinary student, but I was only taking one subject, and that was Arabic. And I was learning a Alif, Bay, Te, Se. So that's how, you know, I got the flat for GPA. So the three years, uh, four years of my studies in Malaysia went very well. Initially when I went, uh, I didn't have scholarship for five months, so I had to do lots of tough work, even working in hotels and lots of other places. But then once I start, started, you know, like my uh, bachelor's degree in management information systems, there was a lot, a lot to do. I started doing programming and lots of stuff, so uh, I was earning quite good as well. Okay, that's my graduation photo. And I 
finished my studies and I came back to Afghanistan back in 2003. Um, I worked for three months with UNDP Afghanistan and then I went for one year master's program in, in Japan. While studying you know, in Malaysia, doing a degree in management information systems, all what I had, the uh, overall you know, picture of IT was like, I want to be a programmer and all that. But after going to Japan and doing my master's in e-business management, I learned that IT is not only about programming, but it's basically a beautiful tool that can actually help us improve our lives, do things better. You know, especially my concentration was on how to use technology and make the government, you know, work better and uh, uh, better and you know more more efficient. So uh, then, after I returned back from uh, Japan, uh, I was looking basically for a job. Uh, I had to you know like start earning and you know getting some stuff done. I came across. Uh, I asked friends and they told me there's an NGO called Akbar and you have you can go out to their office. They have job board. You can find jobs there. So I went there. And I saw that, you know, like it's very difficult for people, you know, to come and look for a job like that. I went in and I asked uh, to meet them and I offered them to build a website for them. And that's how, you know, back in 2005, uh, I, I developed, you know, uh, the first job portal for Akbar. Never knew that they would be my biggest competitor in the next few years. Okay, uh, so. Working one in the, I, I got a job with, with UNDP again in the ICT project, working with the Ministry of Communications. I get to know a lot about the ICT sector and all, made a lot of friends. Uh, but then I decided to quit my job. And just like all typical Afghan families, when you leave a very good, stable job, your parents and you know some of your friends always you know tell you that hey, don't do it. You're already earning. You have a good job. You go to office at. 8 o'clock, you return back at 4. But that was not actually the life I wanted. And plus, the UN was a little bit slow for me. You know, I just couldn't you know, take it. So I, I decided to leave. Uh, OK. And then I started basically by, uh, the, my company, Netlinks. Uh, Netlinks, it wasn't just an ordinary company for me just to do something. But it was actually my passion, my dream. I always you know, wanted to wanted to use what I have learned and make things better, make lives better. That's why well, any you know, events that I would go, any friends that I would see, I would always start talking about IT and you know, how it can help them and blah, blah. And that's why they always thought you know, I'm a very boring person. Um, and then we started the company slow, step at a time. We initially looking at you know, what the market demands were back in 2006. We started pro providing basic uh, networking services, building infrastructure for small companies and all. And later on, we saw that you know, um, we have you know, like these companies. You know, they are, uh, there's a lot of companies coming up. And uh, internet, people are also starting to use internet as well. So we started offering web development services as well uh, and web hosting services. That, and that is what actually made us you know, quite famous in Afghanistan for all these services. And we have always, uh, one, of, one of the success factors later on I will speak as well, is that we have always been relevant to the market. As the market, market needs change, we change along with that need as well. We started with basic infrastructure services when Afghanistan needed that, or when companies or clients needed that in, in, in Kabul back then. And then we evolved into providing you know, more sophisticated services like, you know, software development services and business applications and all that. Uh, and like, unlike some of the other companies, we have always been innovating. And I've seen this you know, through my experience in the last seven, eight years working in Afghanistan that there, are, I, there were a lot of IT companies who started, but they stick to providing you know, one services or doing things exactly the same way all the time. And that led to their failure, you know, and uh, late to their failure because more and more new businesses come, more IT companies come. So you need to innovate and you need to be unique in order to stay competitive and be ahead of your competition. Uh, now, there are two other parts you know, which I'm going to discuss. Some of the bumps or problems you know, that we faced uh, in the last seven, eight years, and then followed by what were our, some of our success factors. So some of the problems you know, that we face and even face until 
uh, a while were fina finances. When I'm talking here about finance, it's not about money, but it's, it's more about how we manage our finances internally inside the company. Initially, we were not organized, and that led to us losing a lot of money, paying you know, extra taxes, uh, and all that. So if you're starting your company, make sure from day one you're managing your finances very, very well. The second thing is don't get overexcited with ideas. You know, we, I've, I've seen lots of you know, our IT entrepreneurs and all. They come and they want to create a Facebook. Okay? Creating a Facebook is actually basically wasting your time and money. Find out an idea, even if it exists in the market, and try to do it better. But Facebook, I'm sure you know, none of us can build Facebook because it's actually the network you know, that has made it valuable. Third thing is protect your intellectual property. Uh, it's for, for companies like us, we develop software, we have solutions and all that. Intellectual property is very important for us. So that is something you know, that we should uh, uh, actually work on that. Hire smart people. You know? If you try to save money and hire dumb people and try to get work done, you will basically go nowhere. But if you pay good and you know, hire smart people, it can actually bring you more and more uh, money or more revenue. The uh, fourth, fourth or fifth, fifth one is no absolute dependence on individuals. Do not depend on individuals, especially like companies like us, software development companies. You have one very good programmer. If you rely on him, maybe he will come back and you know uh, uh, create issues for you. Like we have faced as such one of our good developers back in 2009. He asked us, you know, for huge company share, or he will leave. He left, and he took away one of our biggest projects. But that went on. We learned something from that, and spent every penny uh, wisely. And never leave your resources idle. Get something done by them, so that because even if you have no projects to work on, no product to develop, you can actually start developing something new. And what were our Success factors, as I'm running out of time, I'm going to uh, go through them very quickly, just one minute. Uh, we are very passionate about what we do. For us, uh, this company, this software development company of us, it's not just a business. You know, we spend, we spend, you know, like uh, basically I and my colleagues, we spend day and night working. And that's why, you know, my wife is very unhappy because why I go late. She's sitting over there as well. So I hope after this, she doesn't mind me going late home. Uh, also, we innovate. We set market trends. We don't wait and see what others are doing and follow them. We come up you know, with the trends ourselves, you know, like using certain technologies or introducing new technologies in the market. We do it ourselves. And the market, happily, you know, they basically follow us. And we also create demand. We don't just wait to wait for someone to come and give us a project. You know? We go and we cook delicious food and we show them. And once you know, they look at it, they know it's nice and beautiful and delicious, they come to us and they say, OK, I need this software. You know, this meets my requirements, so I would love to get it. So we create demand. We don't just sell software. We don't just write a code, give it to a company, and let them use it. We don't do that. We develop software. We, develop actu we actually provide solution. We, 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 we take the software and give it to the client and basically present it in a way that actually meet, addresses you know, all their needs. And we show them how their problems are solved with the software that we provide. So thank you very much. I think uh, I've used more than what I was allocated in terms of time. Uh, thank you.